you know, having my dad born in the 60s in the States, civil rights movement, and really just talking about Ali, Jim Brown, Freeman Blue Jabbar, you know, guys who were, who were vocal and stood up for more than just, you know, the accolades they had, you know, in the ring or on the field or anything like that. You know, it spoke volumes of the people they were, uh, their character and the morality and, and what I want to instill in my, my kids and my family. What kind of stories did your dad share about Ali, if you could remember the specifics? I mean, everything, more so watching the fights, you know, it was like a household thing there from the 60s onward where my dad was uh, a kid just waking up, watching the fights and just, just the whole atmosphere, you know, it was, it was entertainment 24-7 with Ali uh, in terms of a time before social media and like it really makes me think now, if, if Ali was right now, he was here right now with social media, he be all over the place. It would be so entertaining. And it's one of those things that, you know, looking back, if I could probably sit down and have one conversation with somebody in their prime, uh, it would be Ali. If you got to interview him or talk to him, what would you ask him? It'd be so many questions that from, you know, what's your your mindset? Because I'm convinced individual sport athletes are wired totally different than, you know, basketball players or, or, or team um, oriented to sports. So just what motivates you? Like, how do you, I guess boxing is basically trying to stay alive, you know, but uh, just so many questions are just running through my head right now from, you know, how do you manage travel, family, to the conversion to Islam and where he was and why do you regret not making up with Malcolm X? And there's so, there's so many questions and he's done so much in his life that, you know, the, the conversation probably go on for days. How do you think history will remember his impact away from the boxing ring in terms of um, his refusal to be drafted for the Vietnam War right. and um, helping the hostages um, be saved from right. the Iraqis? You know, how do you think history will remember that? I mean, I think his legend is just going to continue to grow. You know, at the time when he was making all these, these statements and, and, and actions, he wasn't thought of as a hero. You know, a lot of people in the, in the States probably thought he was a coward or, or not serving his country. And, and now you look back at it and people praise him for it. And, and just to think 30, 40 years from now, what they're going to be saying. They're probably doing statues and monuments and, and everything of the man. And, and it, I think it really just speaks to who he was as a person and how he affected people around him. Going back to your dad, do you think that's how you and your dad bonded, talking about Ali? And do you feel that's how you and your sons will bond in the future as well? I hope so. I hope so. You know, my oldest son, is, his name is Cassius, and, and I, I tweeted that also. Like, I look forward to the day when he really asked me, and we could sit down and watch documentary after documentary, read book after book, and, and he could really get a grasp of why, you know, that name was important to me and, and why he carries it. Um, based on how long you follow boxing um, and taking all these accomplishments yeah. into consideration, do you also consider him the greatest boxer of all time? I mean, it, it's hard to argue. You know, the guy went out and, and backed up everything he said at the, at the heavyweight class. You know, it's, it's not like he was a little guy running around. Uh, he was fighting some of the biggest guys in the world and taking them out and to go, what, 56 and 5 over that span of time. And who knows when Parkinson's was really setting in. So. You know, he, he's a fighter and, and a showman, and I think he, he just totally changed sport 